Hello and welcome to Daily Politics on Trust TV. On this program, we discuss issues around politics, policy, and governance. I am Shafiu Suleiman. It's been three months since the National Convention of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, which produced former Vice President Atiku Abubakar as the party's flag bearer for the 2023 elections. The emergence of the former Vice President and subsequent nomination of Governor of Delta State Defying Yokoa as his running mate, however, trailed by opposition within the party, with River State Governor Nyesam Wike as the most vocal voice against the current arrangement. There are demands for the resignation of the party's national chairman, Yochia Ayu. While fears rises over possibilities of some major party stakeholders working against the party, in 2023. As the PDP internal crisis deepens without a solution in sight, concerns remain amongst party members, especially with campaigns starting about a month from now. To discuss these issues, we are joined by a stalwart of the PDP and former lawmaker and a spokesperson of the Atiku presidential campaign, Senator Dino Melai. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good evening, and um, good evening, Nigerians. Okay, uh, before we commence the conversation, we will take a short break. Stay with us. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us. And today, we're looking at 2023 and of course, issues in the PDP. And we have in the studio, Senator Dino Melai. Once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, the pleasure is mine. All right, okay, let's start um, uh, straight away. Um, but let me start with you. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, looking at some, um, I wouldn't want to say moral burden now, so to speak. Uh, you are also at some point with the APC, uh, sometime in 2015, I think precisely in July, you're quoted uh, to have said, I mean, describe, you know, your current party, that is the PDP, as a satanic party. You know, at that point, you are alluding, I mean, you're reaffirming your support to the then Senate President, uh, Senator Bukola Saraki. And now you find yourself on the other side of the divide, marketing the PDP. Uh, if you reflect back um, and, 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 and today, what would you say has changed, you know, between then and now? Yeah, I will start by saying that um, once I was blind, now I can see. Um, as at the time, I criticized the PDP. I was a member of the PDP at the time, and I criticized the PDP. So when I also became a member of the APC, and APC was growing a wire, I also criticized the APC. So it is not about um, political party. At the time, I criticized those things that were wrong with the PDP. No political party is 100% clean. But the, to, to compare the APC and the PDP is like comparing light and darkness, uh, where PDP is the light. Um, PDP at that time committed what I call miscellaneous offenses. They committed minor offenses. But what the APC is doing today is completely destroying the fabric of our country. And uh, the problem that I had with the PDP then was not, has nothing to do with the um, threat to the unity of this country or even to the um, existence of this country. But what the APC has done today has not only created this unity, but it's, it's threatening even the very existence of our country, Nigeria. So um, you cannot be comparing the PDP and the uh, APC. And that does not mean that tomorrow, if the PDP is going wrong, mm -hmm. I will not point out their they are, they are, are mistakes, but the truth of the matter is that whatever the PDP has done, whatever my grievances or complaint was, are miscellaneous offenses. They are minor offenses, Have and you changed? cannot compare it to you cannot compare it to what is happening um, with the. PDP, where the country, where we don't have a country again, where um, the unity of this country is completely um, gone, where you can be saying, you, I mean, you can't even sleep with your two eyes <laughs> closed uh, in, in a nation. And uh, under the PDP, 
we, I wasn't fighting them because there were no infrastructural growth. There was infrastructural growth under the, the, the PDP. The PDP. Mm -hmm. But today, I mean, um, the story is not the same. Mm -hmm. As I speak with you, in this country today, mm -hmm. there are uh, 56,000 abandoned uh, projects. That ratio is um, second to none across the globe. I mean, abandoned and, and projects. When yes. the government is talking about you know, uh, com commissioning over a thousand projects that have been this, completed. This, these are very viable facts. I'm telling you that we have 56,000 um, abandoned projects. As I speak to you in this country, in this place today, mm -hmm. and Nigeria has been ranked 130 mm -hmm. out of the 140, uh, out of 141 countries. Nigeria is ranked in terms of infrastructure 130 mm -hmm. out of 141. So you can see that is a very, very precarious uh, um, situation. So, so are you saying, in essence, you know, the attention given uh, to infrastructural development by this present administration, which has prided itself, you know, as one of the administrations that uh, have, has focused, you know, on building infrastructure more than any other, uh, they've been talking about, you know, the road construction um, network, a uh, road network that have been constructing around, you know, across the country. Uh, key projects, mm -hmm. including those initiated by the PDP that have been abandoned, the second Niger Bridge, for instance, local Waito Bridge, and several others. Um, I will tell you that whatever this government is parading in terms of infrastructure is fallacy. It lies from the pit of hell. And I want to tell you that um, the performance of this government in terms of infrastructure is a beautiful nonsense. Mm. As I speak to you, um, Nigeria as a country, we need $1.5 trillion mm. to bridge the gap, the deficit in infrastructure. And this is not coming from me. Mm. I mean, this is known statistics that is verifiable. Mm. As so I speak to you, yeah. Nigeria is also ranked 24th mm. out of the 54 out of 54 African countries, and this is coming from the African um, Infrastructure Development Initiative. Uh, sorry, uh, index. Mm. So you cannot be taught. And these ratios were not like this in 2014 and 2015. Are you this, saying the infrastructure this, this, was better this, before this administration? Outrageously better. You cannot even compare it. Hmm. The PDP government in the past gave this country hmm. measurable infrastructure. You cannot be talking about developing the economy. You cannot be talking about developing the, um, um, I mean, job creation. When you have infrastructure deficit, mm. but if you come to specifics, for instance, um, because yes, we we we, we this um, need to compare note. You know, when you talk about infrastructure, even going to rail infrastructure alone, the administration would tell you that before its assumption, you know, uh, the Kaduna Abuja uh, rail uh, uh, track, I mean, was, was being built. You know, it has been completed. Now it has completed that. It has also done the Lagos Ibadan access. It's working on uh, several other projects, including trans, bo transnational uh, uh, projects like the ones you know uh, from from Ibadan, Kano, Maradi, or so. And then that is just uh, rail infrastructure. Mm -hmm. If you come to you know airports, have been given payslips and what have you. Uh, again, uh, Kaduna, Abuja, Kano, you know was 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 unmutterable at some point. Lagos Ibadan. With all of this, you said the government has not done anything? The truth of the matter is that you are just eroding the lies that have been propelled by the APC. Because all these projects you mentioned were initiated mm. by the PDP government. And most of them were near completion stages before um, 2015. There's none of this project you mentioned now mm. that was initiated by this government, including mm. uh, the Kaduna uh, Meduguri yeah. that including you're talking Lagos about. Ibadan, including Lagos Ibadan, including Niger, second Niger Bridge. All, all, Niger, these are all projects initiated by the mm. PDP administration. It was, it's not, they are not new projects. Mm. Let you tell me one new project that is initiated by this government. Mm. These are projects that the PDP government have taken to 70, 80 percent completion level mm. before the APC government came in. And mm. they are just here now, still scrambling with those, those, those mm. projects. They are not completed, even as I speak with you. But isn't this before, contradictory? And, 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 and before, let me, mm. uh, let me I'm, I'm talking statistically. Yeah. The, <laughs> e, e, for example, the average growth mm. from 2015 to date is 1%. Mm. Growth, growth in, what, in what terms now? In terms of what? I'm, to, I'm talking of average development is it growth. Is it GDP? Yeah, that's about? what I'm saying. It's 1% since 2015 to today. While during the Yaradua um, 
uh, Jonathan administration, mm. it was 6.5%. Mm. But it has nose dive mm. to 1% since 2015 to today. I think currently and this are, the GDP is doing 3.11%. No, I'm talking which, which, which is commendable looking at uh, other in GDPs that are in the red. No, 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 no. Okay, look, 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 look at the real sector. Talking about agriculture, talking of manufacturing and oil and gas. It has also nose dive from where the PDP administration left it. I will not want you to be um, basing your um, equation mm. on the propaganda of the APC. I'm talking of the reality. Is it a propaganda? I'm talking, it's propaganda. These projects around the country reality? are being commissioned. Commissioned? Which, which of them has been commissioned? Name one. Mm. Which of them has been commissioned? Mm. These are projects started by the PDP administration. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that even with the taking over, mm. they've not been able to complete it. Mm. But isn't that contradictory? Earlier you were talking about abandonment, yeah. and now you're talking about completion. Mm. I'm saying that mm. there's rates of abandoned project in the country, mm. and I'm not saying just under the APC administration. I said Nigeria as a country since independence. Mm. I said we have 56,000. Abandoned that is projects. across, you know, across various all, governments. Across various governments. I'm not right. limiting it to, but to a it. chunk of EVE mm. is coming under this administration because they are not doing, they are not, they are not, um, they, they, they have nothing to show and they're not productive about it. Mm. So if you look at us as a nation, there's no way you can compare, compare the PDP mm. and the, uh, the APC administration. Mm. In 2015, I buy a loaf of bread for 120 Naira. Mm. Today it's 800 Naira. In 2015, I buy diesel for 180 naira per litre. Mm. Today I'm buying diesel for over 800. Mm. In 2014, 2015, mm. a dollar is 210 naira. Today I'm buying a dollar for over about 700 naira. Mm. Yeah. So let's, you can let's see. Take the first, let's take the first two. Let's take the first two, for instance, yeah. talking about the price of uh, uh, bread, for instance. Uh, but some will say we're also aware of the fact that, you know, um, because of the current, you know, crisis and um, uh, between Ukraine and, and Russia, you know, substantially the production of weed has gone down drastically. And weed is one of the major components of producing bread. And perhaps if there is shortage, you know, in terms of uh, production of weed, certainly you expect some, um, I mean, uh, uh, price to go up. Again, you're talking about the diesel and what have you. We all, we're also aware that the government has withdraw, if you like, subsidy on this uh, uh, product that you're talking about. So, uh, and then they are also subject to global, you know, pricing uh, 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 dynamics. I completely disagree with you because the Russian-Ukraine war started when? This year. The loaf of bread last year was sold for 700 naira, 600 naira. So there is no concomitant effect mm. per se on the prices of goods and commodities because of Russia-Ukraine war. Mm. Russia-Ukraine war started this year. <laughs> and I'm telling you that the loaf of bread was already 700 naira last year. Mm. Dollar was already 600 naira last year, mm. even before you can talk about uh, Russia-Ukraine war. So I'm telling you that it is as a result of ineptitude it is as a result of mismanagement. Mm -hmm. It is as a result of the corruption of the APC government mm -hmm. that we find ourselves where we are. For example, today, 23 million Nigerians, mm -hmm. 23 million Nigerians mm -hmm. are unemployed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Completely. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, yeah, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean. I mean this they started today, the unemployment. I'm, uh, I, I, I didn't say this start today, but mm -hmm. look at the, the ratio, mm -hmm. the percentage before 2015 and what it is today. As I speak to you now, mm. you can see and understand that 53.4% youth unemployment in a country like Nigeria. Mm. And all this, I mean, um, nose diving mm. happened under this administration. Mm. But, but uh, you know... Uh, Women, yes, for example... You're talking about, you know, unemployment, yes. uh, which you're also talking about lack of productivity, yeah. uh, which are fundamental in any economic well. development. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, the, the question is... Um, are you exonerating perhaps the 16 years of PDP leadership uh, in what led this, the country to where it is today? Um, you haven't been also building infrastructure. You haven't been, uh, I mean, uh, um, under the, the PDP's watch, a number of industries went down and then generate, I mean, create the level of unemployment we are seeing today, uh, you know, and all of that. So are you exonerating the PDP from all this 
I am uh, not saying that the PDP mm. couldn't have done better. Mm. But I'm saying that mm. the whole situation became unbearable because of total collapse of leadership, mm. because of nepotism, because of corruption because of putting square pegs in round holes, mm. because of giving carpentry job to tailors. That is what I'm telling you. Under the PDP administration, things were far, far better. You cannot even be talking about it. Mm. For example, the, the quant in the, since 2015 to today, mm. five million people annually mm. join the unemployment markets. Mm. During the PDP, it was less than two million. Today, 5 million people join the unemployed market. And today, how can you even be talking of economy or you're talking about production where there is massive insecurity? Nobody again, nobody can go to the farm again in this country. Insecurity is pervasive even in the federal capital territory. Just a few weeks ago, the brigade of guards was attacked. That's abominable. In the military, that is the last line of defense, the brigade of guards, where two officers were killed with six soldiers. Mm. Until this minute I'm speaking with you, no arrest made. But and, it, and, mm. and, and, and you, this cannot happen under a, a very civil, intellectually mobile government. Mm. But have you forgotten also that yeah. uh, under the PDP watch, a number of... Uh, institution, you know, government institution, including international institutions, I, I mean, and, and high-profile buildings were also attacked here in Abuja, uh, right, you know, at the doorstep of the president. I will ask you. Again, you know, talking about military institutions, a number of military institutions were attacked before. That is the, the NDA, uh, the, I mean, the judge. Are, are you uh, making uh, a mistake that all these were attacked under the APC, not the PDP? Judge was attacked under the APC. Mm. NDA was attacked under the APC. Under the, under the PDP, the Brigade of Guards was never attacked. The convoy of the president was never attacked. Mm -hmm. Under the PDP, as I speak to you, 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 you also know that there was no hijack of rail. And there was no kidnap through, through our rail lines. So the during, 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 NDA, during the PDP. NDA and Jaji and, and, did not and take place during today, the for, let, 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 let me even put it to you. Mm -hmm. In 2014 mm -hmm. to 2015, Jonathan's budget for defense in the entire defense of this country was 66 billion naira. In 2015, 2016, when Buhari brought his budget, it moved to 90 something billion. In 2017, it moved to 140 billion. In 2018, it became 204 billion from 66 billion during the Jonathan administration. But with this massive colossal increase in our security budget provision, there was increase, massive increase, and 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 and, and, and negative concomitant effects is it, is in it, terms it, of security yeah. and insecurity in this country. Is it being shared like uh, 2.1 trillion naira shared, you know, among party chieftains at the build-up to 2015 election? Prosecution that I've never seen the light of the day till today. I don't believe we should be talking about frivolities. I don't say we should be talking about politics. I'm giving you real figures here, talking about budgetary provisions that have triple and quadruple, mm. uh, but yet there is nothing to show for it in mm. terms of results, mm. in terms of results in insecurity in this country. So the essence of all this mm. is that we have incompetent leadership mm. followed by incompetent appointees mm. Who don't even know what to do? Mm, before we leave this, when you talk about result, you know, what the APC government is telling you or is telling Nigerians is that, yes, they've been spending a huge amount of money uh, in the area of security, but, you know, in the area of procurement uh, and, of course, equipping the, 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 uh, the nation's forces, it can be seen, you know, very clearly. Uh, how the government is acquiring various platforms like the Super Tocano that is being used now to decimate, if you like, and raid in the camps of those bandits or terrorists that we're talking about. It was both under this administration. Uh, what you said, there is no result. Uh, Nigerians will find it a bit difficult to understand what you said. What super tucanos? None have arrived. I don't know if you have the right information. I was a member of the Senate, and I was the one who raised the, the, uh, the, um, the petition on the floor of the Senate when the president paid for those 12 tucano gifts running to billions of dollars. As I speak to you, they've not arrived. Not, not one have arrived in this country. 
Not one. Even the ones that I use, you know, uh, in, this, in the North is. And now I'm the one telling you that not, one, to not one have arrived this country. Yeah. And these procurements were done six years ago. Not one have arrived this country. So, you want, oh, this is just gross incompetence. Mm. And the issue of insecurity is, well, that is why Katiku Abu Bakar is saying mm. that in the area of insecurity, mm. it's leadership mm. failure. Mm. In, two, in 2000, 2001, when the Sharia crisis started, mm. Atiku, along with Obasanjo, nipped it in the board. When the government of Atiku, Obasanjo came up in 1999, mm. There was a lot of disunity in this country. There was mass up. The agitation in the Niger Delta was dry. Everywhere was unstable. There was agitation for separation. People want to secede. But what did they do? They came on board and brought a government of national unity. That was how Bola Ige became a minister from Action Congress. And people came also from other parts of the country and other political parties. And peace. Yeah came upon this country. So if I understand your position, so what I'm saying, the APC did not even inherit any insecurity. Uh, I mean, I'm they didn't not, inherit... They, because what you said they, that, inherited, they yeah. inherited a Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe and Borno. Mm. Largely, re, I mean, largely reduced to both Yobe and Borno. But today, there is no part of this country that is safe. Even the president has been threatened that he will be kidnapped. I've never heard it mm. anywhere in the world where the president of a country will be threatened by bandits mm. that they're going to kidnap him. Mm. I've not heard where the convoy of the president mm. has been attacked. I've not heard where the last line of defense of a country, which is the brigade of guards, have been attacked and people killed. Mm. Only under a PC administration. Mm. And the only solution to this mm. is for us to bring a man with experience, with capacity, mm. with the, 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 the well I mean, and, 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 and the, the know-how mm. to take us out of the woods. And okay. today, mm. that man mm. is Atiku Abu Bakar. And, and the yeah. only way to clear this secession and this agitation from different parts of the country mm. is to give people justice. Mm. Because the only cure to injustice is justice. Mm. And if Atiku is, appointed, is elected president, mm. he will definitely give justice to every part of this country. Mm. And all mm. this agitation and all this mm. animosity, you are, everything will go down. Mm. How can you have a country mm. where the president is aloof? How can you have a country where service chiefs who perform below average mm. we are given extension of tenure? Mm. And even when they ended the extension of tenure, they were decorated as ambassadors to different parts of this, con of, of this world. Mm. You, there is shouldn't, no reward, shouldn't. there is no punishment mm. for offense, mm. and there is no reward for good work. That is what is happening under this administration. Okay, now that you're talking about the man with the antidote, um, even though Nigerians also know pretty well that during the Obasanjo uh, Atiku uh, uh, administration, there are also security issues around. You know, the North is the Boko Haram you're talking about. There was also militancy in Minor, the Niger Delta and, they were contained. and all of that. Okay, but then let's talk about solution now. Because if you said we have a man who has the capacity to deal with these uh, 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 issues, how is he going to do it? Looking at his policy document, what is it there that, you know, that will change this narrative? Uh, number one, number one mm -hmm. this country is under police. The Atiku administration will make sure that Nigeria is properly policed. Two, training and retraining is dead. Then, the, also this, uh, the Atiku administration will carry out the, a, a massive reform of our security architecture as a nation. And there will be proper monitoring and evaluation because the president will be decisive. Mm -hmm. He will call the IG, I give you six months. If ABC does not happen, I will fire you. He will call the service chiefs mm. and give them direction. And mm. if they don't meet the demand of Mr. President, there will be decisive action. Mm. But this government is deaf and dumb. Mm. There has been a lot of massive colossal misbehavior mm. by many of the security chiefs. He, the government have no capacity, temerity, or potency 
to even sack anybody or suspend anybody. But it is the same government that changed at the point there were public outcry, changed the entire service chiefs. They didn't change service chiefs. Service chiefs were due for retirement. Their tenure was extended. So they didn't change any. So it was the extension of tenure that ended. Not that service chiefs were changed. And even with what is happening, have you seen any purposeful, decisive, concrete, strategic security arrangement by the president? Even, have you even seen, with the current have you seen, boost, and of course the, 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 the successes that are being recorded. What successes? That people who were kidnapped mm. are still in the bush, in the, all the bushes across the country? That on daily basis there's kidnap even in the city of Abuja, the seat of Mr. President? That on daily basis bandits are becoming more more bolder and more, 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 more draconian in their approach. So you don't appreciate what has been, uh, have been achieved you know, in the last couple of Nothing days? Nothing has been achieved. Mm. People are dying. People's fathers are in the wilderness. People's children are in the wilderness. And this government lacks compassion. Mm. This government is not even giving hope. If there is hope, then we will say maybe there, will, there is mm. no hope. A government that is negotiating with bandits, mm. A government that is saying, giving excuses on behalf of bandits. That is why we but are saying. But you also negotiated at some point with the Boko Haram insurgents when they were holding. That hostages. is not correct. Well, okay. That is not correct. Yeah, still talking about the situation. Yo, I mean, just uh, today or so, uh, the spokesman of the APC campaign uh, council actually talked about the fact that, you know, Kaduna, uh, Kaduna Abuja Highway is safe. You can even travel without any escort. <laughs> and here you are saying that uh, things have not improved. And again, the super tokanos you're talking about, you know, uh, we know that it is also on record, you know, uh, sometime last year, October precisely, uh, you know, the government talked about in de taking delivery of the last batch of the super tokanos. Uh, I think about six of them then. A and yet you said none of them has arrived the country. For, for us, to the best of my knowledge, mm. I'm not aware that any of us arrived this country. I'm not aware, mm. to the best of my knowledge. Mm. And coming to the statement by Kayamo, mm. I challenge Kayamo mm. to carry his car mm. and start his journey mm. to Kaduna from Zuba. Mm. No police escorts mm. and no uh, convoy mm. following him mm. should drive. Yeah himself mm. even by 6 a.m. Yeah. from Kaduna to Abuja I challenge him to do it so I hope or drive from here mm. to Delta where he comes from right. without police escorts without any backup mm. let him drive since he said the road is safe mm. let him drive and prove to Nigerians okay, I hope that the road is safe. I hope, I hope he, will take, he will take up the challenge, even though it is not about him. Nigerians who have been flying the road also substantially talk about the improvement in security situation there. But there was still an incident on that road two days ago. Hmm. There was still an incident on that road two, two days ago. Hmm. So okay. what are we talking about? Perhaps he will, he will take uh, I mean, a cue from you. Uh, I hope he will take up the challenge to drive and show himself also driving, just like he did when he went to the body lawn. The, was it uh, in 2016 <laughs> or so? Okay, we'll have to take a break, break here. In case you're just joining us, the program is Daily Politics, and we'll be interfacing with uh, the, uh, Tiku, uh, the PDP presidential candidate, uh, Tiku Abubakar's uh, uh, campaign spokesperson, uh, talking about Dino Malai, a former senator of the Federal Republic. Uh, together, we'll be looking at issues uh, around governance. Uh, we'll talk about the issues in the party specifically, perhaps when we return from the break. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Mentioning the Nigerian story. Thank you very much. If you're just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. And of course, today we're looking at 2023 and issues in the PDP. Uh, substantially, we're taking the first part of the program to discuss issues of governance. Uh, we'll now be talking about you know, uh, you know, internal party issues and, of course, uh, the build-up you know, to 2023 election. Uh, we're back, uh, Senator Dino Melai. Uh, now, let's talk about the party. Um, your party in, is in serious crisis, crisis in the sense that um, beyond you know, the internal party crisis, 
which is um, raging, especially um, in the light of the acrimony between your principal and the, the your, I mean, um, uh, River State Governor Nye Sam Wike. Uh, some say, you know, your principal and the party have had more than they can chew. For instance, the chances of the party is getting slimmer by the day. Uh, while, you know, it is obviously losing grounds in the southwest because of the emergence of Siwa Jubala Ametunubu, it is also losing grounds, you know, or has lost ground in the southeast because of the emergence of Peter Obi. Now, it's also losing ground in the south-south. And then when you come to the north, it's going to be a contentious uh, contest looking at the emergence of the running mate of the APC uh, from the northeast and so on. How are you looking at these challenges, you know, as you, we approach 2023? Anyway, I want to start by saying that you are completely wrong, mm -hmm. absolutely incorrect. Okay. And this analogy and anal analysis is what you can actually get mm -hmm. from a local beer parlor. Um, mm. It is absolutely not true okay. that the, AP, the PDP is in serious crisis. Okay. There is no serious crisis at all. Mm. And it is not also true that Wiki and the, my principal, by the grace of God, the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, mm. they are at loggerheads. Mm. It is not correct because okay. it takes two people mm. to be in crisis. And I want to tell you this, mm. that there are disagreements within the PDP. And democracy is noisy. Democracy is all about agreement and disagreement. Mm. There is nothing peculiar with what is happening in the PDP. It is a normal disagreement within a family. It's a domestic um, dom domestic uh, mm -hmm. issue that will be domestically tackled. And I want to tell you that we don't, the, the, the PDP is big, strong, and reliable. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you that the party is bigger than any individual. Mm -hmm. So, and bigger than even the opposition that is having imaginary mm -hmm. uh, crisis planted uh, within us. So, I, 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 is, is I, if you allow me to answer your question, well, I, yeah, I, will I, quickly, yes. I will quickly say mm -hmm. that you are absolutely wrong that there's a serious crisis in the PDP. No, mm -hmm. there are disagreements, and which is normal. Mm -hmm. After every primary, especially presidential primary, mm -hmm. there will be reactions, counter reactions, and some of them take time, mm -hmm. and some people take time to heal. But they will definitely mm. get healed. Yeah. I assure, assure you. I assure you that. So, and in politics, mm. it is not possible for you to beat a child and ask a child not to cry. Mm. So everything you are seeing mm. is temporal and evaporative. Mm. And okay. I'm assuring you mm. that in the matter of days and mm, weeks, mm. everything will be forgotten. So I haven't answered. I haven't yes. answered that. I want to yeah. go to your analysis that we are losing grounds in the south. Mm, very quickly. In the, in the, in the, very quickly in the southwest. Yes. And I think that is coming from an imaginative. Uh, uh, is it imaginative? Uh, yeah, you take it, away the influence yeah. of uh, Bola Tinubu me, in the southwest. Let me explain to you that he has no influence in the southwest, mm. and that was manifested in the Osho election, mm. where which is his ancestral home. Mm. <laughs> that is the ancestral state of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Mm. He went there to sleep a night, mm. all to win an election. Mm. Where his first cousin is the governor of the state. Well, you also can you, can you, can you listen to me? The can you allow me state? just land since you asked oh, me a okay. question? Okay. You know, mm. so in the southwest, especially mm. as I said, mm. the attestation to that is the election that was held in Osho State, mm. Bola Ahmed Tinubu's ancestral home, mm. where he was defeated, mm. where a sitting governor mm. was sent out because he has not performed. That is to tell you what will happen in 2023. Mm. That is his ancestral home, mm. not Lagos. Mm. So if he wants to win any place, he should win his own state, which is Osho State. The Iraq Wiji, where he's from in Osho State, is mm. there. Mm. And the governor is his first cousin. Mm. But they lost to PDP. Mm. In the, and is Osho no longer in the Southwest? Mm. You're so thinking about how, will PDP, of... how will PDP mm. that just won an election of a major state in the Southwest mm. now begin to, you begin to tell us that we have lost uh, the Southwest? But you know, and I'm also you know the reason why, you know, there was crisis, in, the internal crisis, uh, within the party you, in that you, state. Are you, uh, are you well, an official well, of the APC? Well, now I'm just... Because you are making have, excuses for the APC the record now. straight. That's the point. The record is straight that okay. PDP won that election. Okay. And I'm telling so, so you that today, one out of seven today in so. Lagos State, if mm. election is conducted mm. today, mm. the PDP will win Lagos State. Mm. Bola Ahmed first outing, mm. first public outing, mm. after he became the presidential candidate mm. 
of APC. He was stoned in Lagos. It was reported all over. Atiku's first outing to Adamawa, just a few days ago, he had a glorious entry, both in Jada, in uh, Yola, and also in Genyi. So what I'm saying in essence is that Lagos State today conduct an election Article will defeat Bola Ahmed Tinubu in Lagos. By, then come to uh, your state. Come to uh, uh, this. I'm talking about practical. I'm talking about practical. <laughs> okay. Article was in Lagos mm. just two days ago. Mm. It was in Lagos to attend the NDA okay. conference. Yeah, let's talk it about it. was received mm. everywhere, every nook and cranny. Mm. There was a, a major acceptance. And you not talk also about the East. Mm -hmm. You are talking about yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Peter will be in the East. Yeah. As you are sitting here, I ask you please. Mm. Name one prominent Igbo man that is going around or is with Peter Obi. I, I'm asking you. I one be, I should prominent, ask, just I should one, asking you pro, one prominent Igbo man mm. that is together with Peter Obi, mm. campaigning for Peter Obi or following Peter Obi around. So you mean, As I speak with you, Peter mm. Obi has not been able to go to Anambra, his <laughs> own states. <laughs> why? You should ask him why. No, I should <laughs> be able to ask, ask him why. You should ask him why. This You're is, a journalist. This is, this is and, you, and you carry out investigative journalism. Mm. So you should ask him why. But I'm telling you, the PDP, mm. one of our strongest hold, is the Southeast. And we have not lost an inch of support from the Southeast. So I want to tell you mm. that from every, from the numbers available, mm. from the statistics available, mm. from the political calculations available, mm. from the strategy and opinion pools that are taking place, mm. PDP, definitely by the grace of the Almighty God, mm. is having... Uh, we're having our way. In fact, we have already told Atiku to start writing his uh, acceptance speech. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you have, you've done your analysis uh, based on the South uh, West and the South East. What yes. happened, you know, with the, uh, even though you downplay the crisis in the party, saying that it is, it's not it, it is temperate. It's not but, downplaying. But how, how temperate, it's temperate, is, a and crisis, and how temperate is a crisis yeah. that is making you about to lose four governors? That, Benway. Have those governors uh, you contacted know, you that they are, they are losing them? These are, these are governors. I'm asking you that. Have those governors I'm contacted you that they are losing them? These governors were hobnobbing with the APC candidate. Yeah. They were in London, in Paris, just yesterday or so, mm. meeting. And you saw the pictures and all of that. And yeah. yet you are saying that there is no crisis in I, the party? I'm telling you that there is no crisis in the PDP. Mm. The PDP is one strong political party. Mm. And I'm telling you that... As I speak to you today, mm. there's no shaking and there's no cause for alarm. And, and that's we why are you are yet to constitute your campaign council. And that we, is why we, you are yet to... Uh, to well, even the campaign mm. starts end of September. We have one month mm. to campaign starting. Mm. So we are not too early mm. or too late mm. to constitute a campaign council. Mm. And I'm telling you that in a matter of a week or so, mm the campaign council will be constituted. While, while you are and I'm not even saying that it has not been constituted, but will be announced. <laughs> while you are yet to even call the bluff of a man, you call, you know, uh, you said has no, no issues with your, with your principle. I didn't say you have no issues. One don't who quote is me wrong. I, I didn't say you have no issues. To, to become say, an albatross say, of the I party. I said they have disagreements. Okay. I said they have disagreements. Okay. And I'm telling you that those problems mm. do not have the capacity mm. to derail the success of the PDP, so not at all. So in other words, uh, weak case, you know, resistant or weak case uh, adamant, you know, uh, with regards to your reconciliatory approach would not affect the chances of your principal. Is that what you're saying? I just told you today mm. and told you a few minutes ago mm. that the PDP is stronger than any individual. Mm. And I'm telling you that Wiki is a PDP man. Mm. We respect him and he has, he's a man of honor at the convention he made a loud commitment mm. that he will not leave the PDP and anybody that wins this election, mm. that he will support that person. And that is what I'm holding But do to. you see him staying in the, I mean, staying in the P PDP as, and then working against the interests of the party? Because that is what I, I'm been... telling you that Governor Wike is mm. going to be 60 next mm. year. Mm. He's not a young man. Mm. And I know him to be a man of honor. I know him to be a man of his words. Mm. And what I heard from him on the convention ground just a few weeks ago mm. is that he will not leave the PDP mm. and that he, as a man of honor, mm. will work with whoever becomes the flag bearer of PDP. And that's what I'm holding on to. Okay, now looking at, um, I mean, in line with, with what you are saying now, um, there are also insinuations that 
The simple reason why you're yet to call the blob of uh, Wiki is the fact that you're also lacking the wherewithal in terms of finances to execute or to carry out to go ahead with your campaign, campaign, you know, strategies and execute it, you and and he, you you find him, you know, extremely important <laughs> when it comes to uh, financing, you know, uh, this campaign, and that is why you are yet to call his bluff. <laughs> ah, you must have been listening to some individuals who are on uh, very cheap drugs, <laughs> because to say that Atiku Abubakar, who is a serial contestant. Mm -hmm who have contested for the presidency of this country. <laughs> you understand? And a serial loser. I'm, 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 it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you know? I'm talking, you are talking about finances. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that he has, he has, he has contested perfectly well, and he has, he, has, he, has, he has funded his elections through him and his friends and cronies. Mm -hmm. You understand? You will tell me that he's not prepared. Was it, did he not go through a primary? That he has to rely on the government. I'm coming. Did, did he primary? not go through the primary? Go through a primary? Mm. Did Atiku Abubakar rely on a government in the last two presidential contests? So let's not uh, begin to say things that make. I mean, that will turn the station to like a comedy. These are a comedy issues. Show. You're talking about they are not, they are the not campaign the, primaries. primaries. No, no, no. Everyone knows that my brother will just finish. A certain governor my brother will just. My brother, my brother, let me tell you this. We just yeah. finished the Oshun election. Mm. Governor Wiki was not present at the at the, at, at, at the campaigns, mm. and neither did he fund that election. Mm. And we won that election. So I would not want you to begin to attribute a whole political party to an individual. Mm. It's not, and, no, you, you, and you don't even say that about a conglomerate like Atiku Abubakar. You don't say that about a world, <laughs> I mean, chest like Atiku Abubakar. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? You don't say that about him. This is a very successful businessman who has his contacts in mm. every part of this country. Mm. Even if Atiku Abubakar doesn't have the money, the Talakawas will raise the money because mm. they want Atiku Abubakar to be the president of this country. Mm. But I'm even telling you that by the grace of the Almighty God, the PDP can prosecute our election and prosecute it successfully. Mm. Talking about the Talakawas, you know, uh, uh, alluding to the, to the fact that your, your principle is accepted by the ordinary people. Earlier when you were talking about his uh, visit to Adamawa, you know, to his home, home state and what have you, uh, but isn't it, um, doesn't it also worry, worry you or your camp that there has been, I mean, the APC has been mocking you that your principal, you know, having been in power for eight years as vice president, could not touch the lives of his people in terms of building a common access road to his, to his hometown. This is it has to be the intervention is, of the APC. This is, an, uh, this is another Ugoguru talk, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> this is another Biapalo discussion mm -hmm. and uh, from people who are on cheap drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, Why I, will, I, will ask, I will ask you, I will ask you mm -hmm. to go to, I just came back from Adamawa, mm -hmm. and the reception that was organized mm -hmm. for Atiku Abubakar, I can tell you on good authority, mm. while appreciating him and giving him an award and a plaque of appreciation, mm. the entire people mm. of his vicinity mm. appreciated him and rolled out 164 projects mm. influenced by Atiku Abubakar for his people. Mm. And they, they were reading and reading and we said, is enough. Mm. And they had a plaque of appreciation mm. by the entire, the, I'm talking about the rural people, presented it to. So if somebody is giving you those kind of. But, but then we're talking about facts and reality. I'm talking facts about facts and, and realities. They even let's, appreciated him for the bridges, for the roads. Okay. Let's, and there was mm. no pothole on the road mm. to Jada. It is big. It was, it, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I was surprised to was, see the network. And it was built by the. the network of roads. By the PDP government. There. Of course, yes. Oh, okay. Don't, no. for, don't forget that it's the PDP government that is in uh, Adamawa. Right. Okay, talking about, you know, I, I, I'm actually using his state to measure perhaps his impact on the ordinary people. A lot of impact. And this is, I'm this, coming. And this is, I'm coming. Uh, sorry, just this point. Yes. And this is just on government grounds. Mm. A man who built one of the best universities in Africa. For who now? Within his states. I'm coming, listen. Within his states. For the ordinary people? Within his states. And I also announced to you that 50% of the students there are on scholarship mm. by Atiku Abubakar. Mm. By Atiku Abubakar. Mm. The water factory is there, mm. employing people. Mm. The fruit juice company is there, employing people. Mm. 
the GoTel TV and radio station is there employing people. It's farm with over 1,000 cows there employing people. One individual, just to mention a few. Mm. So with this, you think it can be trusted with, you know, the, I mean, leadership to come 2023. But then there is also a concern mm. with regards to his claims, you know. Uh, in line with what you just said, is uh, in his uh, policy document, he's talking about pulling 3 million people out of poverty uh, um, yearly. Yes. Uh, that's the projection. But there's also a contradiction, if you like, concerning the number. You're talking about the people in his payroll. At some point, he said there are 500,000. Uh, 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 At some point, he said there are 100,000 people in his payroll. Um, are you worried about this inconsistencies and where contradictions? Did you get, where did you get your statistics from? Yeah. Give, where did, what, where did you see of, him make the statement? Part of the statements he made earlier on, when mm -hmm. he's talking about his impact on creating jobs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at, at two different occasions he mentioned that, and, and fi people find it contradictory now. Yes. And then let's let's also talk about, you know, just, rec not, just recently, you are talking about education. Atiku Abubakar mm. is a very comprehensive person, very cohesive. Let me drop. He wouldn't have given you two different. Let me drop figures. one now. He was talking mm. about the Bobin power, you know, talking yeah. about power yeah. uh, restructuring and what have you. And he was talking about uh, uh, handing over uh, universities to states when he knew that. Even at the point, you know, universities were run, were run by regional governments and not states. And here we are talking about a state government. And he also acknowledged the fact that, uh, you know, education in the concurrent list, which means, you know, uh, the federal, the state and the local governments can, I mean, w adjudicate on it. And then he's also talking about, uh, you know, privatizing, if you like, virtually everything, including education, including, uh, he talks about, you know, selling the refineries, power and all of that. So, yes, his posture is about, you know, a private sector-driven economy. But what would be the, 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 the role of a federal government, for instance, if you are to privatize everything? For example, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me hmm. educate you hmm. and um, elucidate hmm. on many of the things that perhaps you do not comprehend about hmm. the policy direction of Atiku Abubakar. Everywhere in the world today, government is a business. Oh. Everywhere government have succeeded in the world today, government is run like a business. Oh. Ideas now rule the world. Oh. No longer, I mean, materials from extractive um, um, resources. Oh. The richest people on the earth, 30 years ago, were those who have extractive industries, oh. like King Fahad, because of crude oil, like Sultan of Brunei, like King of Kuwait, because they all had natural resources, gold, mm -hmm. crude oil, and all that. But today, the richest people are the, in the world are those who have developed ideas. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates. Look at Amazon. Mm -hmm. Just an app. Look at Zoom. Mm -hmm. Just an app. Look at Uber. Mm -hmm. Just an app, declaring billions of dollars. After. So mm -hmm. you involve, you involve with time. Mm -hmm. You involve with um, periods and seasons. Mm -hmm. Atiku is trying to take us out of our analog years mm. where you can only have a successful economy mm. that is driven by the private sector. Mm. And you cannot have a robust economy mm. if you do not diversify your economy. Mm. And you cannot diversify your economy or succeed mm. economically if you do not liberalize mm. the economy. Okay. And what I think we're talking about we have in to, the education sector, for yeah, example, yes. is that all the great universities we have in this country are mm -hmm. products of regional governments. Mm -hmm. Today you have no regions. Mm -hmm. What you have is what came out of the regions, states. Mm -hmm. And what uh, we are and you're saying comfortable is that, listen, pushing the, the listen, universities listen to, to the states. Me, please. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is mm -hmm. that it is not automatically pushing the university to the state. Atiku is even telling you mm -hmm. that the first thing to do is to carry out a constitutional amendment mm -hmm. to put all universities in first line charge. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Yes. So that there will be no issue of governors mm -hmm. through corruption mm -hmm. and mismanagement mm -hmm. delving into the funds mm -hmm. of universities. Mm -hmm. so, but because yeah, yeah. he was talking mm -hmm. under 10 minutes mm -hmm. 
and the question was asked, mm. it was given only two minutes to respond. There may be no, there, there was no time for him to elucidate mm. and explain into detail. Okay, you are not. And now, mm. Mm. the APC people, yeah. Pinned on that. You are now explaining. You, you are now explaining. Coming, but I want to take you on this. Allow me you are talking about privatization. Please allow me. Please, allow me please very quickly. But because not, but you did time not, is not on our you side. You did not look mm. at mm. Shatima, mm. who said he will be in charge of security. Mm. And that Asuadu, because he's an economist, will be in charge of the economy. Mm. He carried the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and turned it upside down. Mm. Where the constitution gives Security to the president as commander in chief, he said he will be in charge of the I security. think he was making and reference to the to, 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 to his experience. Allow me, allow me as allow a me, governor. Allow, allow me, allow me. Right, and right. where where the constitution has given power mm. to run the economy to the vice mm. president, he said he will be giving that mm. to uh, okay. Asiwaju. Right. Okay. Uh, the time time is not on our side. Otherwise, I want you to clarify on this. Uh, but then. Except if we can do it in 30 seconds, I understand we have to go. Um, you're talking about privatization and his idea of, you know, uh, a private sector driven economy. But there are also concerns with regards to his role in the past. He chaired, you know, the, the uh, uh, pri I mean, the privatization council, I mean, during the, the, uh, his, uh, the, the Obasanjo regime. And the concern is that, you know, what they've done was actually to share and sell this, uh, this uh, 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 institutions or enterprises to their cronies and friends. That is not correct. And you know Obasanjo to be a very deep, oh, oh, okay. Obasanjo okay. to be a very deep Nigerian. Right. If Atiku had done mm. anything wrong, Obasanjo mm. would have prosecuted him. And <laughs> as I speak with you today, right. the privatization like, of power mm. that they are making noise about mm. Was done while Atiku was removed as mm. chairman of the Privatization Council. Okay. You should go and check. So he doesn't that take that. Obasanjo removed him yeah. as chairman of the Privatization Council. Mm. And when the power project, the NIPB project, and all that was done, mm. Atiku was no longer in charge of privatization. Oh. Of those, and okay, most of the you. privatized industries, what mm. Atiku was in charge mm. was that of telecommunication and ICT, okay. which is the fastest growing sector today mm. in Nigerian okay. economy. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate uh, it's continuous uh, conversation. No we hope to get you back to the studio Anytime. some other time so that we can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that has been uh, Senator Dino Malaye, the spokesperson uh, to the uh, presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. And of course, uh, uh, talking to us on Daily Politics, we appreciate your coming. It's a pleasure of mine. Uh, on his behalf and the technical crew, this is where we come to the end of uh, the program. Uh, do join us tomorrow. We'll be back with another topic and personalities. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day.